The tsetse fly, which is native to Africa, lives by sucking the blood of humans and animals. Specific tsetse flies are also known for transmitting a parasite called Trypanosoma brucei. If a human is bitten by a tsetse fly infected with this parasite, the bitten person may also become infected with Trypanosoma and catch sleeping sickness. Symptoms include seizures, lethargy, and in extreme cases, death. Of course, as this disease also affects livestock like cattle, there are many farmers in Africa that have a hard time because of the tsetse fly. That's probably all most people know about the tsetse flies. But there's so much more to be uncovered about these insects. First of all, they don't lay eggs. What's coming out of the female tsetse fly right now is actually a fully formed larva, not eggs. She only has one larva at a time and births only 8 to 10 offspring during her whole lifetime. She also only mates once in her lifetime, storing the sperm she receives from the male and using it to fertilize her eggs when she needs to. Compared to fruit flies, which lay 100 to 200 eggs at a time, it's a complete 180 degree difference in terms of reproduction style. Tsetse flies are quite unique in this regard because most insects lay a lot of eggs at once to increase their reproductive success. The only other insects to reproduce this non-oviparous way are the deer fly, sheepkhead, and the bat fly superfamily. It's really rare in nature. Dr. Ricardo explains that this unique reproductive strategy, where offspring are born as larvae rather than eggs, may have an evolutionary advantage in that it makes them safer from predators and parasites. As soon as these tsetse fly larvae are born, they instinctively burrow underground for safety, where they pupate and grow into adults to continue their life cycles. But how on earth can a female tsetse fly nurse such a large larva inside her body? Surprisingly, they feed their larva with a type of milk, just like mammals. Unlike mosquitoes, which store hundreds of eggs, tsetse flies carry a single larva in their womb with milk glands from which it receives a supply of milk made up of protein and fat. It even resembles mammal milk in color. The female tsetse fly nurtures her young inside her body for 10 days, during which she sucks lots of blood to make nutritious milk, enough to make her belly look like a full mosquito's. They even excrete moisture to concentrate the blood they've sucked. But as I was doing research for this video, I suddenly realized, hey doc, what can this research be used for? By studying how tsetse flies reproduce, Dr. Ricardo believes we can find ways to reduce the tsetse flies population plaguing African farms. And the first method he mentioned was using bacteria. Dr. Ricardo found that the tsetse flies milk is made by a symbiotic bacterium called Wigglesworthia glossindia. And when he used antibiotics to kill them, the mammary glands didn't function properly. With the symbiotic bacteria removed, CT fly females began synthesizing proteins and fats and storing them in their bodies instead of making milk. In other words, females that lose their Wigglesworthia bacteria only grow larger without producing any milk. Of course, these CT flies can't produce any offspring. Dr. Ricardo realized that if he fed these antibiotics to cows, the tsetse flies would ingest the antibiotics as they feed on the cows. This could reduce the tsetse fly population. However, he also mentioned that this method could lead to a problem of antibiotic resistance due to overuse, emphasizing the importance of approaching the issue carefully while considering many angles. The second way to curb tsetse fly populations lies in their mating behavior. Do you remember how we mentioned that tsetse flies only mate once in their lifetimes? In a 2016 study, Dr. Ricardo discovered the reason. Seminal fluid proteins that males inject into the female's body as they mate. These proteins prevent females from mating with other males by regulating their ovulation physiology activities. So, if we analyze these proteins and eventually mass-produce them, we could spray them into tsetse fly habitats as a form of population control. Of course, this is still a potential solution, and more research is needed. 
we've delved into the incredible ecology of the live birthing tsetse fly and the process of their larva's growth. It's amazing to see what one scientist can discover when they pursue their curiosity for humankind, don't you think? Science is a window to the world, and this has been Science Dream. Thank you for watching.